Hey, how's it going? Oh, hang on. I need a beer. Hey, welcome everyone. Today we're doing a little shop talk video. So just recently I went to a mud drag event. I wasn't expecting any super results, but the neat thing about doing a drag race is everyone's doing the same course and you line up in the same spot and you get a time. It's really cool to see how some other people have their machines set up and can almost run a full second faster than <laughs> And it's basically the same bike. That's pretty interesting. So I knew I had some issues with my clutching. I started hearing some noises and I knew that wasn't good. Here's one of the interesting things. And once I got in to inspect everything, I noticed the belt here, I blew a chunk right out of it. I put this belt on new in the spring and it's only got about 800 kilometers, maybe 20, 30 hours of work on it. So that was a little bit disappointing. So that's why I was suspecting I had some issues with my clutch. This is my STM 3RS Rage Primary. When I took it in the shop the other day, the uh, young lad that was a tech, he took a quick look at it to see if there's nothing obvious. And the first things he noticed was that the rollers were worn. These are the rollers. They were worn right out. There's three of them. I had a feeling there's something wrong with the, the uh, one-way bearing. And it actually isn't bad. It's got a bit of noise, but yeah, noise in a bearing. Can you hear that? All I can hear is the stupid fridge that kicked on. These here are the buttons. I think they drilled, I think they drilled these to get them out or something. I'm not sure. But if you look close there, you can see the, you might be able to see the scoring on there. But these buttons are for the, I believe are for the spider. They help the spider move back and forth. The company I took it to, they're called Hurricane Performance. And they are performance snowmobiles and ATV side-by-side -side stuff. They actually build turbos. They happen to be an STM dealer. These are the pros, they know what they're doing. What Dave was saying was, it's just from all the dirt and debris. Um, so, I mean, I had a few issues with my machine getting water in the clutches a few times when it was first new. I mean, I, can't, I cleaned it out as best I could, but I probably should have taken it off and like freaking like soaked it in a water soaking bath. I think the damage was already done and then it just got worse and worse and worse and we got to the point it did. Even though you think your bike's working pretty good, that's the thing with the drag races with times, it gives you some information and you got some hard data that you can compare with. So the next logical thing we got to do is I got to install it, put the belt on, take it for a test rip. Okay, I just got back from going for a little test burn. Oh my God. This thing is an animal now. Animal! Engagement seems to be around 24, 2500. I'm not sure I really like that. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But I got a lot less clutch weight in there. And this thing just takes off like a rocket. Guess what? I actually won a contest. Got me a new set of tires coming. So I'm gonna have me a set of 32 inch assassinators that are cut and grooved. Check it out. See how much they take off? What's that? Maybe almost a quarter inch? I don't know. Quite a bit off the paddle there. I'm gonna really try to get those on just to try them in this gig. Like, why wouldn't I? All right, everyone, welcome back. Right now, I'm working on switching the tires over. So far, I got one done. I started with the rear ones first because I wanted to see what my clearance was gonna be like. So, there's a bit of room there right now. Not a lot, it seems. But right now, the tire is at full extension. So it's gonna come, once I get it down on the ground, when I, once I get the other side done, this is gonna come up, but it comes up and it comes back. With the trailing arm suspension, when it's at full travel, that's the furthest forward it's gonna be. If this ends up being too tight, what I will do is the plastic piece here, 
I'll slide it forward and drill new holes. Bob's your uncle. But I really wanted to see what it was gonna be like first. And I think it's gonna work out fine. But you don't really know until you try it out. I don't have a lot of experience with changing tires. I've done a few things. I know small tires are a pain in the butt, like small trailer tires, uh, boat trailer tires, pain in the butt. But with beadlock wheels, it's a lot easier. Let me show you. So you gotta undo all the bolts, take them off. What's really interesting is just looking at all the, the gook and goo that's under the ring. Yeah. Look, look at that. That's brutal. So of course, I had questions, maybe trying to find some tips on how to break the beads on tires. So naturally, I went to YouTube and I quickly found something from an older gentleman that used this trick with a jack. So I figured, you know what? I'll try it out. And you know what? It works. Your standard kind of floor jack. This is like a three ton or three and a half. The ratchet straps down there on the bar where the, on the support bar for that attaches the wheels. Basically, all we're gonna do is the jack's gonna come up. It's gonna push on the tire. One important step is to make sure you got the jack locked in place. So it'll work a lot better that way. Come on, baby. Oh, she's gonna go. She's gonna go. Oh, I think I did. I think I got it already. Oh yeah, there we go. So what you gotta do is you gotta disconnect the strap and you gotta do it in four places. The rim comes right off. Oh yeah, there she goes. Pop. Hello leverage. Oh yeah. Oh yeah buds. Just like that. Before we go to put it on, you gotta lube it up. Lube is good. Lube is important. This is, uh, my choice is uh, Irish Spring. It smells really good. Now anybody that's ever changed tires, they must know how important it is to make sure you got them going the direction you want. Because what would really suck is if you got three going one way. So this one's gonna be for that side. So we're gonna make sure it's going this way. <clears throat> okay, we got her started. I'll show you what's going on here. So, We gotta get this part up here. And all I did last time was just use a pry bar and it went pretty smooth. So let's give it a whirl. One pry bar. You just gotta manipulate it a bit. Come on, baby. Can't get the thing out. Why do you do that? You know, if you had a proper tire iron, it would probably work a lot easier. But I don't got one of those. And look at that. It just popped right on there. It's too easy. There, see, she's in. If you're like me and you've never done this before, there's a lot of wealth of information in your owner's manual. It actually shows you the proper torque sequence and the torque procedure. So basically it tells you, you do it in three steps. So your first pass, you do it at 27 inch pounds. Make sure it's lined up. See here? Check, make sure the gap is even all the way around. So what it's telling you, just do a crisscross pattern. But then when you come to do your final pass, you go all the way around. It's not a lot of torque, but you gotta do it evenly so that the tire sits nice and smooth and it doesn't leak. This part's a bit of a process. If I can do it, you can do it. Check it out, she's starting to go on there now. Guess I just need to keep hitting her. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, I think we got her now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, buds. Uh, about 28 or so. Pressure check. So we'll let that sit for a bit. And then we'll air it down a little bit and throw it on the machine. Oh my God, that's so much freaking taller. Oh, lots of room, boys. Okay, sorry, you can't see. Look at that. We're good. Look at that. Not a lot, but enough. Nice. All right, so those modifications to the footwells went all right. I'm pretty happy with the clearance I got. Saves me spending six, $700 on a new set of footwells. Why spend money when you don't need to?
like everyone says, they ride pretty smooth. on the road. I don't know if I like this spring or not. It's pretty aggressive. I'll try a pull in four wheel drive. Holy frig boys and girls. I don't know if I like this spring. It might be just a little too aggressive. Like I can barely pull the front end up because it just it just wants to spin the tires. Try this uh, teal spring out and uh, I think I'll order me up a white one and see how that does. But I gotta say, um, I tried I tried the machine out the other night. I could, it was dark, so I didn't have the camera with me, and it would go right up to 7,900 RPM and then and then build to 84. I noticed with the change in tires, a little bit of extra weight, go to 7,879 and slowly worked its way up to 82, whereas before it was a pretty smooth all the way up to 8,400, which is pretty crazy. So I think we're close. I think we got her set up pretty good for some skeg now, don't you? I think so. Only one way to find out. So while you're waiting for my first test with the Assassinators, why don't you check out this video here? It's my first time competing at a mud drag event, and it's the dirtiest my machine has been in under 30 seconds of use. See you in the next one.